Hey guys, it's your local frogman here. With Endwalker patch 6.05 dropping about two weeks ago and everybody figuring out their favorite classes to play, I figured a guide video on my new main class Sage would be helpful. Alrighty, so the first thing I want to start with is what makes Sage similar to other healers. There are five spells that it has in common with the other healers. Diagnosis, your base single target heal. Prognosis, your base AoE heal. Agiro, your resurrect. Dosis, your base damaging spell, and Disgrazia, your AoE damaging spell that damages around you and has the same range as Scholar's Art of War. All these spells are pretty self-explanatory, so there isn't really much need to go into further detail for them. Getting more into Sage's identity, Eucrasia is an augment spell that is used to augment one of three spells. Dosis the Eucrasian Dosis to inflict a dot, Diagnosis the Eucrasian Diagnosis to create a single target shield, and Prognosis the Eucrasian Prognosis to create an AoE shield. It seems to bother a lot of people that you actually have to press two buttons in order to inflict a dot on a target, but it never really bothered me that much since the trade-off is that Eucrasia has a fast recast timer of one second, as well as being an instant cast. You will also notice that all three Eucrasian spells are also instant casts, which means you can cast all three of these spells while moving. This makes Sage an incredibly mobile healing class, allowing you to already be on the move to where you need to be to set up AoE abilities, to get to a safe spot, or to just follow your tank in a dungeon. Now I will go ahead and tell you, your base healing spells Diagnosis and Prognosis are actually pretty terrible on their own without Eucrasia. A combination of the cast time, the mana cost, and the low heal potency, there are very few situations where using these spells regularly are a good idea. It's actually better to have good resource and cooldown management than to use either Diagnosis or Prognosis over their respective Eucrasian forms. Cardia is another trademark stage ability that marks a party member with this green symbol that heals that person for a heal potency of 170 whenever you use one of six damaging spells, those spells being Dosis, Eucrasian Dosis, Dyscrasia, Phlegma, Numa, and Toxicon. It's worth noting that you are healing your party member when you cast the spell, not based on your damage or based on how many targets you hit, meaning Eucrasian Dosis heals as soon as you cast it, not with each dot tick, and that also means your AoE damaging abilities will heal for the same amount regardless of how many targets you hit. Cardia is an incredibly useful mark to put on a party member exclusively on your tanks. I say this because I see people putting it on a DPS in order to top them off, or to do it in order to heal them bit by bit in order to continue doing damage. I don't know if this is out of sheer laziness or whatever, but don't do that. It's pretty terrible. Always have it on your tanks, specifically your main tank, as it acts like a constant, albeit weaker, white mage regen as long as you're attacking, which should be the vast majority of the time. Another great thing about Cardia is that it has a 5 second recast timer and acts as an off global cooldown, so you can actually weave it between spell usage if there's an upcoming tank swap. In the same vein of Sage's identity is something we've already slightly touched on, Phlegma. You can use this spell very early on, even when synced at a low level, and it fills a very strange role in terms of damaging spells. You see, for all three of the other healers, you have your Orange Parse damaging spell, you have your Dot, and you have your AoE spell. And Sage has those too, but now Sage has this fourth spell, Phlegma, that has two charges recharging every 45 seconds that deals a lot of damage in an AoE, more than Dosis. No resources used besides mana, no cast time. The only downside to Phlegma is that it has a short range of 6 Yelms to be used, despite being a caster, meaning you practically have to be in melee range to your target to use it. For a long time while playing Sage, I kind of forgot Phlegma existed, and didn't use it for trash packs and bosses since its role for DPSing just didn't exist for the other healers. Don't be like me, and be sure to use it as often as you can so that you aren't wasting uptime with recharges, or you can save them to be used during raid-wide buffs. Now let's talk about resource management. The resource available to you as Sage is called Adderall, and you automatically gain a tasty blue pill every 20 seconds. These can be used for one of four abilities, Drukol, Tarakol, Ixacol, and Caracol, all of which have no cast time and restore 7% maximum mana. All four of these have their place to be used, it's just a matter of figuring out which to use based on your situation. If your target only needs a heal, then you can use Drukol. If your target is going to receive damage soon and or has a Vuln stack, consider using Tarakol or Caracol, each providing a 10% damage reduction, but don't stack with one another. Both Tarakol and Caracol have low cooldowns of 45 seconds and 30 seconds respectively, so feel free to use them liberally in order to mitigate damage for your party. I also tend to use Drukol at high to full health if I know there won't be any large damage coming anytime soon, just to keep my mana up and to not overcap my Adderall stacks. Since you get free stacks every 20 seconds, you can always use Rise of Mata in an emergency just to get one stack immediately. That way, you can get some mana back and continue doing damage instead of sitting on max stacks and doing nothing with it. This is especially useful for Savage Raids where you may run low to mid piety to increase damage output 
while also using Adderall to mitigate damage as much as possible. Another resource you have available is Adder Sting, which you get one stack of whenever your Eucrasian Diagnosis Shield is broken. This will allow you to use Toxicon, an AoE spell with no cast time that deals the same damage as Dosis, but in an area. Since this does the same damage as Dosis, it seems like there isn't much point in using it for a boss fight, but its lack of cast time enables you to use it while moving. You would shield your tank pre-pull or while they're eating a tank buster, you hold your stacks until a part of the fight where you have to move to a safe spot, and use them while you're moving. That way, you never have to stop DPSing. Last but not least, we have our personal and party-wide abilities. Some of these you'll use situationally, some of these you'll use all the time, and some of these you'll rarely touch. Let's start with those. Soteria augments your Cardian heals to be 50% stronger for a short duration. On paper, this sounds good, but in reality, your main tank will be taking more damage than this is worth the vast majority of the time. This buff helps slightly with trash packs in a dungeon, but you already have better tools to deal with an incoming damage besides Soteria. And when it comes to extreme trials or savage fights, slightly buffing your healing on one target every GCD just isn't good enough. If this buff completely disappeared one day, I might not even notice. Pepsis is another tool that seems great on paper, but lacks a certain omelette du fromage factor. It works by first shielding your target or targets, then removing that shield in order to heal them again. The theory behind this is to use Eucrasian Prognosis to get an AoE heal and shield on your party when they're all low, and then pour a can of Pepsi on them to heal them a second time. However, the double heal simply doesn't justify the removal of the shield on your whole team. At 90 you already have Zoe plus Numa, which is infinitely better than using Pepsis, and with heavy raid wides you will have a pure co-healer to depend on for raw healing potency. The only exception I can think of is a longer period of downtime after a heavy raid wide with Numa already on cooldown, but even then you have other tools like Physis plus Ixacol to heal your raid, even if it doesn't get them to full. Remember, at the end of the day, Sage is a shield healer, so when a raid wide is coming up you need to think about mitigating the damage before it goes off, not healing the raid to full after every raid wide. There isn't really a need for you to be a jack of all trades with Pepsis and try to do everything. Just stick with Cope, you'll be fine. Crisis attempts to fill the gaps and cracks in your kit for raw healing potency, especially in dungeons. Where Sage seems to be lacking the most is in dungeons, going from pack to pack, but in my experience, Crisis doesn't really seem to be all that helpful to fix that issue. If my tank is doing a double pull, your best bet is to mitigate the damage and help deal damage to the pack as much as you can before having to heal your tank and mitigate again. Throwing in Crisis to the mix will help a very small amount, but it will rarely make or break any pull. Haima or Panheima plus mitigation with or without Fizzes is your go-to for trash mobs as you will pretty much never need these for boss fights in a dungeon. So increases the healing potency of your next spell by 50%. This buff is actually quite versatile as it increases the potency of your healing, not specifically the potency of HP recovery, meaning this works to strengthen your shields as well. It's important to note that this works for spells, not abilities, so this won't work with your Adderall abilities. This is best paired with Eucrasian Diagnosis or Eucrasian Prognosis for thicker shields, or optimally with Numa after a raid wide. Speaking of heavy raid wides, Physis is your go-to for regularly dealing with party healing. It has an AoE regen potency of 130, while also increasing the HP recovered by other actions by 10%, making your other healing spells stronger for a short time. It also has a low cooldown of 60 seconds, allowing it to be available between trash packs and multiple times during a boss fight. Don't be afraid to use this anytime you could use extra healing power, even if it's in a dungeon and your tank is the only one taking damage. Holos works similar to Caracol, as it's also a raid buff of 10% reduced damage taken, but this one doesn't give mana and doesn't require Adderall usage. Despite having similar effects to Caracol, Hollows can actually be stacked with either Caracol or Tarkoal, although you generally want to space out the damage mitigation, especially in the harder Savage fights. Hollows also gives a flat heal of 300 potency, with the damage mitigation lasting 20 seconds, while Caracol gives a 100 potency regen for 15 seconds, with the same 10% damage mitigation. Despite a lower duration, Caracol's regen will end up healing for more, and will also give you that bonus of 7% mana regained while using one stack of Adderall. Using Caracol before raid wides, or just to mitigate damage for your main tank in a dungeon, is by far more useful than Hollows when trying to deal as much damage as possible. However, there will be some instances where raid wide will come between the 30 second cooldown of Caracol and the fall off of the buff, which is when you would want to use Hollows. Now these are the big boys of playing Sage. Coupling with Sage's incredible mobility is Icarus, a 45 second dash to a party member or enemy. This works the exact same as Monk's new rush ability, Thunderclap Those Cheeks, although Icarus has a slightly further range with a longer cooldown and no recharge mechanic. 
The important thing to remember with both of these abilities is that you can dash to enemies and party members, whichever will suit your needs better. Icarus can be used in many different cases that expands the different ways you can play the class. You can use it to greed uptime to get to a safe spot. You can use it to get to the center of your party to use a raid-wide buff instead of walking there to save uptime. Or perhaps you just want to catch up to your tank who's going Mach 5 triple pulling down the corridor of a dungeon, limit testing your shiny laser weapons. Needless to say, Icarus is one of Sage's top tier abilities, and with its low cooldown of 45 seconds, it can be used profusely with little to no drawbacks. Another ability to be used with no remorse is Haima and Panheima. I put these abilities together because they both do the exact same thing, just that one is the weaker AoE version of the other. They provide a 5 stack shield with two independent timers that last for 15 seconds and the stacks of the shields will fall off one at a time as they are broken. If all five shields are not broken within the 15 second timer, the remaining shields will provide a heal for each remaining shield. There is actually a sixth shield in each ability that rarely gets used because you would first have to break all five shields within 15 seconds. The buff you get that gives you the healing effect with each remaining shield also works as a shield, so if all shields are broken, there's nothing to be converted to a heal, making it a sixth hidden shield. If you were to put Haima on your main tank that double pulls trash packs in a dungeon, they can very easily blow through those 5 shields in 15 seconds, providing them with the 6th shield. And there's no need to worry that the healing buff will expire before it can heal you or be converted into a 6th shield, because after each shield is broken, the timer gets reset, which is why the 5 shields and the healing buff have two independent 15 second timers. With multi-hit stack markers and boss fights like the final boss of Paglifan or on the first extreme trial, Panheima is a perfect fit. There is just enough time between each hit to break the first shield and apply another shield before any damage can be taken. If a player were to take damage too quickly after a shield is broken, their HP would take the damage before the next shield is applied. This can be seen in dungeons when the tank is being attacked by 5 plus mobs at a time. Despite how extraordinarily powerful both Haima and Panheima are, it's still worth mitigating and shielding through the damage your party will take instead of exclusively using these abilities as a crutch. It's sort of a give and take knowing how much mitigation you need to provide. You need a firm grip on how much to shield or mitigate and not go overboard. Just like with Scholar, you don't want to waste mana or casting time to over prevent damage, which could be damage you would otherwise be dealing. All in all, Sage is an incredibly versatile and practical healer in many different situations. It may take time getting used to using Ecrasia or Phlegma, or just generally being more mobile as a caster, but I think that gives Sage an incredibly high skill ceiling, which is a good thing. It's nice to see Square giving the players an opportunity to use what they know and show what they can do with the class instead of providing us with the cookie cutter kit and calling it a day, which they very easily could have done. The diversity in Sage's kit allows it to fill multiple roles as a middle ground between healing and shielding, as it doesn't lean too heavily one way or the other. In a way, Sage reminds me of Nocturnal Sect Astro, except Sage is actually good. It has better mitigation, regens with increased healing potency potential, and a resource system that makes your abilities hit harder in exchange for popping pills, which will only make you focus on mechanics more. It's a win-win! Anyway guys, that's going to be it for me. I hope you enjoyed my guide on Sage. Let it guide you to clear all of your raids, master your laser shooting tiny spears, and adjust for all those black mages out there with three Voln stacks that just gotta get that last fire four off. I love you all, take care of yourself.